Hi everyone, Corey here with Team Kramer Fishing. And before we get into the this video, um, I want to talk just a little bit about catching bigger fish with uh, ultralight setup, or especially ultralight line. And by ultralight, I mean it kind of depends on what you're fishing for. Um, if you're fishing for a pretty big fish, you know, six pound uh, test might be considered ultralight. But usually, I consider four pound and under. Um, but maybe up to six pound, depending if you're really fishing for um, a big fish, that could be a challenge on six pound line. Um, but those medium sized fish on light gear is a lot of fun. You're going to be able to um, find a lot more of those fish than the giants that, that you might occasionally fish. And then pretty much every other fish that you catch on ultralight setup is going to be fun too. Um, but what's not fun is hooking into a really big fish and then losing it. So I just want to talk a little bit about, you know, some of the tips that you can use um, to fish your ultralight setups to give you a better chance to land those bigger fish when they do come. Um, as you'll see in this video, you know, I get some pretty big fish considering the, the setup that I'm using. Okay, probably one of the more important things is that you want to use small hooks and small lures with the line. I mean, this seems obvious, but it might it might not necessarily be. So the biggest pretty much that I use is what you'll see me using in this video, and that's a 1 16th ounce jig. Now this has a underspin on it too, and but it's about, and it might be just slightly bigger once you count that underspin than a 1 16th, but they say it's a 1 16th. Um, that's about the biggest that I go. Now it's not always so much the weight. You could throw a little bit more weight on this setup, but what it really comes down to is the hook, the how big the hook is. One of the big advantages, um, in my opinion, of having small hooks is that they're incredibly easy to set. Um, you have to do a little bit of hook setting with this with this 1 16th ounce hook. Uh, it's not particularly sharp either. But when you go down to those like size 20 uh, Daiichi hooks that I use a lot, I mean, those are hooked by themselves already. You don't have to do anything. Even the size 14s, they pretty much hook themselves. They're very thin. If you get the good, like uh, especially the Japanese kind, they're very good. I use mustads too sometimes. Um, but they're so sharp and they're so small um, that you're going to get that hook into the mouth of the fish pretty well and pretty easily. You don't have to have a big stiff rod um, and you can have some flex in your rod, which is the third thing. You want some flex in your system. So I, if I'm going with light line, I always use mono. In fact, I would say 20 pound braid is the lowest that I'll go because there's not very much stretch in the line. Okay, so if something jerks, a big fish jerks, or you know whatever happens, the, the tension gets put on that line a lot and it can snap, okay? So, I, I mean, maybe if I was ice fishing or something, I might use a very low like braid. I haven't started using braid for ice fishing, but in normal circumstances, I like mono because it has flex. So flex is the main thing that I really want in my ultralight setup. So if you see the fish I'm, I'm catching in this video, this is on a $20, okay, Eco Claw travel rod. I'll probably do a review of it later. But I mean, it's a fiberglass rod, so it has tons of flex, tons of it. This comes in really handy for throwing these light lures too, because you can really whip them out there. I mean, I was throwing this little 16th ounce lure into like a pretty good crosswind. You know, I was able to throw like three quarters of the way across this pond that I was fishing. So um, you can cover a lot of ground with these small lures if you have some flex to your system. Now this is pretty extreme flex. You don't have to go that far. Um, the ugly sticks, if you get the thinner versions, the lighter versions of the ultralights, okay, they have a lot of flex too. And you can do the same thing. You can whip those, those lures out. Or if you just have a true, true ultralight rod. Um, and it doesn't have like a ton of backbone and it varies so much from size, from length to length. Um, it can vary on the exact same rod. So my two Daiwa Pressos, I'm not going to pull them out and show, but on the six foot version, it's smaller and the blank is thinner 
and I can get a little bit more of that whipping action on the shorter version, but the 6.6 is a lot stiffer. Um, so I get a little bit, but not as much. I, and so depending on the size of lure, um, if, it's, if it's a heavier one, like these 1 16th ounce, I can usually get enough whip factor in that six foot rod to throw as far as I can with the 6.6, six, even though the 6.6 six, six is longer. So, and there's almost no way to tell whether it's gonna be, you know, whether it's gonna be just right for what you're doing until you try, even the different sizes from, you know, one to the other, or you can just watch videos and hopefully somebody has um, tested kind of both versions if you're lucky. That doesn't happen too often, but sometimes it does. Um, but having that flex is what gives you um, the kind of leeway that you need with these big fish. You're gonna get big head shakes, you might get jumps, they might, you know, they might do all kinds of stuff that's gonna put stress on that system. And if you are using a small hook, the biggest danger is that your hook's gonna rip out of their mouth. You know, other than getting in cover, you know, I mean, that's just with any light line fishing. You, you can't fish till, in a bunch of rocks or a bunch of cover. I mean, it's just not gonna work. So I'm assuming that you're fishing an area where you can get away with using lighter line, all right? But so the main thing is once you have the fish hooked in order to get them in is with those small hooks is that you don't want the hook to rip out. The fish will get tired eventually. Um, unless it's a giant and it can like spool you up, but I've never had that happen yet. So um, you just stay on the fish, keep the flex in your system. When they make a run, let the rod do the work. You have the mono line that has some stretch in it too. So you have stretch all throughout the system and then you need a decent drag system. It doesn't have to be awesome, but you want it to be consistent. So you don't want to, eh, 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 eh. That, will, that could snap your line too. Um, the stiffer your system is, the whole, you know, the rod, the line, everything else, um, the more important having the smooth drag is. Um, I, th I didn't have like, I mean, these cast kings that I'm using, they don't, they don't have great drags, but they're actually pretty smooth. The re I've had this reel 30 years and it's really worn out. It's just kind of a backup reel that I have now, but the drag on it works just fine for, you know, the size fish that I catch in this video. Um, but it's a very, f uh, I had a lot of flex in the whole system with the line and the rod. So if you have a little bit stiffer setup, you want that drag to be able to just nice and smooth, all right? And then the last thing that you wanna have is a net, okay? Because when you get those fish in, all that flex that you have in your line, when they're right close to you next to the bank, that's a lot of that's gone because you've reeled in a lot of the line. And it, depending on how you hold your rod, you know, I watch people a lot of times, they'll, when they get the fish in, they'll scoot their hand up the, the rod like this. So now you only have half the flex of your rod if you end up doing that. Um, if you have a longer rod, you might have to do that. I usually use them a little bit shorter rods. Um, so I don't have to do that quite as much, but a lot of people will lose fish at the boat or at the bank because, you know, they get the fish's head out of the water. There's that much more tension when they flop around, when they start flipping their body all around. So, <clears throat> having a net is absolutely um, really, really key in landing a big fish on light line. Um, I have a review of the old Mad Bite net that I used to use. I have the newer version of that now. I'll probably put out a review of that sometime. Uh, maybe I'll link the other review up above uh, so you can see what kind of net it is. But it's a folding net so that I can carry it with me all the time. And when I hit a big fish all of a sudden and I'm on my ultralight, I have a net that I can get them in once I get them tired and get them close to the bank. All right, with that, let's get into the video and uh, you can see some of the fish that I managed to land. Yep. What would you do if I started catching all kinds of fish on this lure after you took it off first thing without even trying it? Oh, oh, Viv. Fish on first cast. <laughs> right after. Holy crap. That is best. Right after I said that, you went to all that trouble. You had to have worms. You wouldn't listen to your dad. I might need the net, babe. Can you get it out for me? Can you get the net out for me? This is a pretty good fish. And if it's a sunfish, it's like a record. Feels like a bass though. Feels like a bass. 
you want to come down and get in front of me, or? Hurry up, I'm getting him close. Yep, extend it out. I love this rod because there's so much bend in the rod. It gives me a lot of, yeah, that's a good bass. That's like at least two pounder at least. Maybe bigger. Oh, oh. They have six pounders in this pond. Oh my gosh, big. That's a nice bass. Ready? Yeah, get ready. You ready? Okay, hold on. Not quite. That's like a two pounder, maybe three or four. Don't know. It's been a while since I caught a bass. Got his head turned. Oh, missed him. All right, try again. Yeah. Got him. Nice. What do you think? Three pounds? I'm gonna guess four. three pounds. Four. You think four? It'll probably only be two with it. Oh my gosh, it feels heavier in the net. Yeah, it feels like two noodles. Holy smokes. Four noodles. It'd be nice if it was 20 inches, but I don't think it's gonna be that big. Maybe. Oh my gosh, that might be. Okay, I'm gonna sit him down here in the water while I get all my junk out. Do you want me to move your... Keep I'll the net under him, thanks. Guys. Look at that mouth. I want to see. Holy it. smokes. Ooh. Four pound line. Okay, what I really want to. 20 wanna, pound bass. It's not 20 pounds. <laughs> I really want to do is get a good measurement. Can you hold his lip, Viv? Please don't bite me. Get a good measurement because this could be 20 inches. 17. Mm -hmm. Close his mouth. Eighteen. Eighteen. Maybe just a hair over eighteen if I stretched it out, but he's not gonna hit twenty, which is what we would need for master class. Alright. Let's um, um, biggest bass of the year so far. I don't, I don't really bass this much. Oh that must hurt. Okay, we're gonna get a weight on him next. Maybe if I have batteries. Yep. Three pounds on the dot. And I'm pretty sure it's a female. Might get be getting ready to um, lay. No, that's in the spring, honey. Oh, that is a chunky fish, man. Solid three pounder. Feel, I'll be honest, it feels bigger than that. I've caught four and five pounders before. They were rounder though. I mean, it is in the fall, so it's not in the spring. Woohoo! Nice way to start off. It's not starting off the day because we've been fishing in different spots, but nice way to start off that first cast. All right, and there she goes. Nice. Fish on again. It's another solid one. Doesn't feel quite as big as the last one right now. But his tail looked like it was a long way away from his head. Yeah, we might need the net again. Oh, he's pull a drag now. Viv, this is this looks like a good fish too. What if it was the same one? Sorry if we're pointing right into the sun, guys, but you know that's where the fish is taking us. I gotta be patient here. I'm getting a little excited. I have only four pound line still, so. Yeah, it's another solid one. He looks a little smaller than the last one, I think. Here's, All right, ready? Yes. Here he comes. Nice. Hey, we're getting our net job down, but our camera work is bad because all I filmed was my arm. Oh, man, that's another big fish. Smaller, but big. Smaller? I don't know, man. It might be the same. He looks almost identical to the last one, seriously. I don't know. Two, like two and a. 2.7 or two, two pounds seven ounces I should say mine is probably so he, four and a half pounds four when did you get a four and a half pounder I've yeah. only seen you get like bigger than like two and three quarters all right another I solid one a little bit smaller than the last guy come on dude
<laughs> this one feels a little smaller. This could be a bluegill. Maybe it's my pumpkin seed that I need. Uh, smaller bass, smaller bass. I think I can get, I think I can handle this one maybe. Ugh. I got him. <sighs> Pounder, maybe a little over a pound. Man, that fish is thick. That's like like a 13-inch fish, and he's like, I bet his girth is like freaking 85. All right, not 85, but 